And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Shakedown. Riding up in the elevator, the attractive young woman, Jackie Mills, appeared deep in thought. She seemed hesitant, undecided, as she stepped into the corridor on the ninth floor, walked down to suite 906. She paused outside the door. It's quite a decision, isn't it, Jackie? With your dangerous past seemingly behind you, you know the kind of activity Paul Jessen, the man inside, is about to suggest. But you're tired, aren't you? Tired of trying to make a living playing the piano in the club Chanticleer. Tired of being without the things one more transaction could bring you. You open the door. Step inside. Well, Jackie, so you decided to come. You said you wanted to talk. And you want to listen. I thought so. The minute I recognized you at the club Chanticleer. Now sit down. Let me finish my pinhead... Your what? Oh, you wouldn't understand. It's my hobby. Precision craftsmanship and all that. I'm always engraving poems with this stylus, quotations from the Bible, odd sayings on the heads of pins. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, really? There. Take a look through this jeweler's glass. What? It is, and very clear. Judge not the men whose souls are on fire... For they are beyond good and evil. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. The philosophy of criminals and poets. Yes, isn't it? Can I show you any more? Well, how many do you have? Oh, five or six hundred. You see, I keep this little engraving outfit in my pocket, and every time I have a spare moment, out it comes. Takes a steady hand and nerve. Oh, easy, once you get on to it. Well, I can engrave a sentence at one five hundredth of an inch in just a few minutes. Fascinating. But uh, wasn't there something else you wanted to talk to me about? Yes, there was. However, I thought we might go out for a drink. I'm busy. (laughs) You have a reputation for being cold and unapproachable. I find it pays. Sometimes. Ever hear of the Victoria watch? No. One of the most famous watches ever made, perhaps the finest. Rose diamonds, platinum hands. Never mind the details. What's it worth? A hundred thousand dollars. Is it registered? Yes. Uh, Count me out. Too risky. What do you take me for, a fool? I have no intention of stealing the Vittori. The owner's going to give it to us. His name is Lindquist, Benjamin J. Lindquist. I'm listening. Lindquist is respectability itself in the social register, multimillionaire, about my age. Sixty? Not quite. Go on. All right. Benjamin J. is deathly afraid of the slightest breath of scandal about his good name, and yet he can't keep away from a beautiful woman. He's not the only one, I hear. No, he isn't. Oh. All right. Now, where do we go from here? We'll rig a little trap for Benjamin J. With me as the chief. Something like that. And if he bites? We play him along carefully. And, of course, the proceeds from the watch we divide equally. 50-50? Sure. Okay. But I won't settle for less. You won't have to. 
Now, all you have to do is to drop into the Blue Angel Cafe this Friday by accident. Benjamin and I will be having cocktails. The Blue Angel? Right. But let me handle everything. Everything, Paul? I thought you needed me. <laughs> I'm sure you'll know where to take over. You know, I think we practically have that watch now. It's an interesting situation, isn't it, Jackie? The kind you've never been able to resist. And on Friday at the Blue Angel, under the high-sounding name of Jacqueline Carraway, the accidental meeting goes very well. Though you do have difficulty keeping from laughing at Paul's introduction. <laughs> Miss Jacqueline Carraway, Benjamin Lindquist. How do you do, Mr. Lindquist? Miss Carraway? Jacqueline's almost like my own daughter, Ben. Oh? Yes, since her father died. I've kept a sharp eye on her. He was my dearest friend. Where's she been all these years? How come I've never seen her before? Well, until a few years ago, she was in school. Then she wanted to study art, so I let her go to Paris for a while. She just got back. She stays at your place, I suppose, where you can keep your eye on her? No, she has her own apartment, but I still keep my eye on her. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue to. Now, for one thing, I'm going to take you away from Ben here. What's this? Oh, sorry, old man. You're a friend, too. But I recognize that gleam in your eye. A fine thing to say. I might have something to say about this. Maybe there's a gleam in my eye. Uh-huh. I thought so. I see here, Paul. Good night, Ben. Pleasant chat. See you soon, eh? Hey? Coming, Jacqueline? I, I'm afraid there's nothing else I can do. What's the big idea? He's watching. I like to troll slowly the big fish, my dear. But don't worry. He'll call or stop by tomorrow, ask to take you to dinner. Only you don't go. Not without Daddy. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. But Paul does know, doesn't he, Jackie? You find that out the next day when Benjamin Lindquist contacts him, asked to take you both to dinner exactly as Paul predicted. And all through dinner, you can see that he'd like to talk to you alone. Only Paul doesn't give him the opportunity. Not that night or the next. But a week later at dinner, a planned phone call takes Paul Jessen away to meet an important client at the airport. You're finally alone with Ben Lindquist. And in a few minutes, you should know where you stand. Well, I hope you'll forgive me saying I'm not going to miss Paul. <laughs> well, you know how fathers are, even adopted fathers. They never believe you're grown up. You seem grown up to me. I find you, well, twice in a true woman. Of course, uh, you have a young man somewhere. No. Never got used to young men, I guess. They're so... Oh, well, so well scrubbed and silly. Like a, like a boy on his first day at school. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> but it makes it lonely. Paul's friends are older, but... Well, they think they're robbing the cradle of witches. Look at them. They're probably afraid of you and themselves. Oh, it must be nice to be settled. Children, home, wife you love. Mm, looks nice. On paper. Oh? Understand, I don't want to say anything against my wife, Estelle, but... Uh, but you've outgrown her. Uh, you might say that, yeah. Oh, it happens so often. I wonder if you... I, I mean, could a girl you always... No, no, it, it's quite impossible. I'm afraid it is. But why should it be, Jackie, all these evenings of seeing you... Please, Mr. Lincoln. Ben, I, I'd better go home. No. It's been so difficult getting a chance to even talk, and you do like me, I can tell. Yes, oh, yes, I do. Too much. We'd better quit while we both can. No, I'm going to see you again. Right. Now, please. All right. Friday. I'll send my car for you. The Clayton. I'm not here. Good. Uh, maybe we'd better not tell Paul.
Paul understands perfectly later that evening at your apartment, doesn't he, Jackie? The two of you enjoy a good laugh at the romantically inclined Benjamin Lindquist. And then Paul explains the next move. You'll still take your time, Jackie. We wanted to lose his head, so you don't kiss him goodnight, you don't fall into his arms until he swears he loves you and promises to get rid of his dear wife herself. Right, Ed. Glad you agree. Of course, I will admit I'm trying to keep you out of his reach as long as I can. I didn't just happen to choose you for this deal, and you know it. Well, I'm beginning to respect you, Paul. It isn't going to end here, Jackie. You see, when all this is over, you and I are going to be much more than just good friends. Oh, I'm flattered. But until we have the Vittori watch, let's concentrate on the business at hand. Shall we, Paul? John? Friends, this is Marvin Miller. You folks who listen to The Whistler regularly have heard me get enthusiastic about Signal Ethyl, a premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline. You've heard me say that the next best thing to a new car is any car of any age powered with Signal Ethyl. But tonight, friends, I'd just like to tell you why I personally use Signal Ethyl in my car. When I touch the starter, I want my motor to spring to life quick, like turning on a light. And Signal Ethyl gives me that kind of starting. When I step on the gas, I want to feel pickup that makes the back of the seat come up and push me forward. And Signal Ethyl gives me that kind of pickup. When I start up a hill, I want plenty of smooth power to take me over the top without shifting. And I can always count on Signal Ethyl for that. Well, there you have it in a nutshell, friends, the reasons why I like Signal Ethyl. And why I'm so sure you'll be just as enthusiastic as I am about Signal Ethel once you try a tankful. Well, Jackie, it's going well, isn't it? Ben Lindquist, infatuated as a schoolboy. And surprisingly, the slick, smooth Paul Jessen actually in love with you. When the time comes, you'll know how to turn both situations to your advantage, won't you? But for now, you know that you must concentrate on Benjamin J. Lindquist. You play it very warm and friendly during the next few weeks, but still manage to make Ben keep his distance. Then you and Paul decide that it's time to move in for the kill. And so one night after a quiet dinner at an outlying supper club, as you and Ben Lindquist are sitting in his car in front of your apartment... Ben, Ben, where are we going? You and me? I don't understand. You don't know what I want to hear, what any woman wants to hear? That I... I love you? Is that what you mean? Is it what you mean? Of course. Oh, I'm glad. Ben... What do you intend to do about Estelle, your wife? Uh, that's a big problem, Jackie. Yes, it is. But you'll have to solve it. Or do you love me enough to, to want to marry me? You know I do. And naturally, I expect to get a divorce, but you've got to give me some time, darling. How much time? I intend to see my lawyers about it, uh, well, next week. Divorce is serious business. So is love, Ben. You know, Ben... This way it isn't fair to any of us. Not to me, your wife, or even you. Jackie, please. Come here. You want to kiss me, don't you? Yes. It's all right, darling. Uh, it's all right. Because I'm going to say goodbye to you, Ben. Now. Oh, Jackie. Goodbye, Ben. I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm not going to see you again. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie! It was a perfect performance, wasn't it, Jackie? Just right, you tell yourself. And you avoid answering the telephone, which rings incessantly for the next few days. You and Paul want Benjamin Lindquist to put it down in black and white. And finally, 
He moves into the trap. Special delivery letter from Miss Jacqueline Carraway. Sign here, please. I'm looking for a Jacqueline Carraway. This Western Union. Yes. I got some flowers for you in a telegram. A registered special, ma'am. Sign here, please. Thank you. You've played your part well, haven't you, Jackie? And now it's time for the last scene before the final curtain, the shakedown. Paul is to handle this part. While you remain in your bedroom, supposedly suffering from a nervous breakdown. A few days later, Paul comes over and phones Benjamin Lindquist. Ben hurries over to your apartment. Paul, I came as soon as I could. How is she? Not very well. Come inside. Is there anything I can do? Yes, there is. Go in to see her, take her in your arms, and tell her you're going to marry her. Why? Oh, you know I can very well do that. I was just carried away. Do you understand these things, Paul? Understand. Ben, this is despicable. You deliberately led her on, told her that you loved her, that you'd get a divorce and marry yes, her. Yes, yes, I was wrong, but, but aren't we making too much of this? Are we? Go in and look at her and then tell me that. Oh, Paul, she'll get over it. Find a nice young fellow. I'm, well, much too old for her. You weren't too old a month ago. Nor are you now too old to be taught a lesson. I'm going to let your friend see those letters you wrote her. Your business associates, the public if necessary. I'll make you a laughing stock. No, you can't do that. There's my wife and my sons to consider the, the scandal. Paul, you know I have positions of trust. Uh, look, I'm a wealthy man. Perhaps I Jacqueline can... has uh, never wanted for money. She was well provided for by her father. You don't seem to understand them. A girl's in love. She only wants you. Paul, I... Well, I, I can go to Estelle about this. There was... Well... Another incident last year, you know. I do indeed, because I know you. Oh, I warned Jackie, I warned you. Well, uh, perhaps some gift, uh, a substantial token of my affection for her. Well, I don't know. What could you possibly give her to make up for what you've done? I am prepared to be generous, Paul, very generous. But I told you, she doesn't need money. I know, but there must be something, something special she wants that money can't buy. You've known her for years, Paul. Can't you think of anything? Well... I don't know how much it would help, but ever since you showed her your jewelry collection, she's talked constantly about the Vittori watch. Well, that's the only thing I've ever heard her say she really wanted. The, 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 the Vittoria? No, I just can't give that up, Paul. Well, Ben, you asked me. I told but you. What's the Vittori, Paul? It, it's not its worth. I, I don't mind that. Well, neither does but... Jackie, nor I. But it would mean so much to the girl. Can't you understand, Ben? Heaven knows why, but the girl is completely in love with you. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, I am sorry. Well, all right. I guess she deserves it. The Tory will be hers. I want her to have it. You tell her, Paul, a symbol of what she means to me. And uh, uh, Yes? Uh, perhaps that way, when you explain, uh, I, uh, I might see her again, huh? Well... I'll do my best to explain. Uh, good. <laughs> good. Well, I'll run on now. And the arrangement? I'll send the watch over with the bill of sale, transfer papers, everything. The messenger will be here within an hour. Goodbye, Paul. You heard it all, but you've won, haven't you, Jackie? The Vittori watch will soon be in your hands. And you and Paul enjoy your biggest laugh to date as he recounts Benjamin's sly hopefulness toward seeing you again when you're over your nervousness. And Paul takes you to dinner by way of celebration. You agree to meet at his office the following afternoon. Well, Jackie, how do you feel? Not even a hangover. Wish I could say the same. Sit down. Well, anyway, the Vittori is safe and sound in the vault. Good. How soon do we sell it? It'll take about two weeks to get top price. Yeah, I guess I can stand it that long. Oh, will it feel good to have money. Do you still plan to split? What do you mean? Oh, I thought we might keep it in the family. We might. Eventually. What's the matter with immediately? We could get married in Vegas. 
I'd uh, I'd like to have time to think it over. What for? Well, a girl needs time to make up her mind. Now stop it. You can't pull that act on me. I've watched you, remember. You don't sit around daydreaming, batting your eyes in innocence. Paul, please, let's not... I'm not going to be another Benjamin Lindquist, Jackie. You're going to marry me, understand? Since you're getting nasty, you might as well wake up to the fact that if I wanted to marry a man your age, I could have done it a long time ago. Okay. Now we understand each other. I hope so. You've got two weeks to sell the watch. Don't take any longer. You're worried now, aren't you, Jackie? Because you're forced to watch Paul. On Friday, exactly two weeks later, you rush up to his office, determined to demand a settlement of your agreement. Night, Paul. You walk down the corridor to suite 906, Paul Street. You open the door, enter. Inside, you see a man moving the furniture and listing each item. Is Mr. Jesson... Uh, may I ask why you're itemizing Mr. Jessen's office furniture? We're removing it, ma'am, early Monday morning. Mr. Jessen's putting it storage. Well, this is pleasant. Say, if you're still here when Mr. Jessen gets back, tell him we'll make the pickup first thing Monday, will you? Yeah, I will. Paul? Uh, Jackie, glad you're here. Hope you've forgotten our little episode. I have great news. A Swedish collector has offered us 100000 for the Victoria. He'll cable the money Monday. On Monday? Yes. Just drop over here at the office Monday afternoon. I'll take the watch now. What? Why? This is a gun, and it's moving. But, Jackie... I talked to the man from the moving company. Oh. Come on, Paul, give me the watch. I never argue with this gun. All right. It's in the vault. Come on, we'll go and get it. Now, get in there and get the watch. And the ownership tape. I'll wait out here. And don't forget, I'll be waiting with a gun. Who's that? I don't know. We'll stay in there. Don't shut the vault door. You don't know the combination. I might stop it. I'll scribble the combination down. What is it? Three left, ten right, four left. Three left. Ten right, four left. Yeah. Now, now, while I see who dropped in on us, just find the Victoria. Oh, hello. I'll just be a minute. What are you doing? Building engineer sent me up to check the thermostat. Seems to be all right, though. Well, I hope so. We're expecting an important client. Don't worry. I'll be out of here in no time, man. Just a little fixing here. I'll be through in a few minutes. You're relieved as the building maintenance man finally leaves, aren't you, Jackie? And you hurry back, open the heavy door to the vault again, still covering Paul with your gun. Paul stands just inside the vault, the Vittori watch in his hand. Thank you, Paul. I'll take that. Jackie, you know you can't finish this job without me. Oh, stop it. I'm not trying to commit the perfect crime, Paul. Sooner or later, the police will trace me to this place, but it'll take a little time... And that's all I need. Just a little time to get out of the country. Jackie, you can't get away with this. Oh, can't I? Today's Friday. They won't open this vault until Monday. By that time, you won't be able to tell anybody anything. Jackie! And that'll give me two days to disappear from the face of the earth. You've been around me enough to know that I can do it. Goodbye, Paul. And thanks for everything. Auto accidents due to skidding always increase during rainy weather when pavements are wet. So if even one of your tires has worn smooth and slippery, the time of your life to trade it for a new tire may be now before any more rain. And the tire buy of your life is definitely today's new Lee Super Deluxe Tire. You see, for added traction on slippery pavement, Lee's new Super Deluxe Tire has a wide eight-rib tread design that assures far quicker stopping 
plus extra protection against skidding. And for added wear, the rugged cold rubber in Lee tires is toughened still further with patented Phil Black O. The result is such long life, these Husky Lee Super Deluxe tires actually cost less per mile. What's more, the generous trade-in allowance signal dealers are now offering for low tire for old tires reduces Lee's cost even further. And liberal credit terms are available at signal stations, so play safe with your life and your wallet. Find out now how little it will cost to protect yourself and your passengers with new Lee tires, whose double written guarantee is backed by 19,000 dealers throughout America, including all signal service stations. Well, Jackie, luck has been with you all the way, hasn't it? And now you're about to realize the big payoff. The Vittori watch is legally yours. You decide to forget the Swedish buyer, take less, sell immediately to a famous local jewelry firm. You leave Paul's office and hurry over to the Terman Jewelry Company, one of San Francisco's largest firms. You grip your gloves nervously as you stand in front of the owner awaiting his decision. Outside, a cab is waiting to take you to the airport, where you can make connections to get out of the country. Well, your ownership papers seem in order, miss, and $80,000 is their price. Good. Then it's settled? I don't see why not. I will, of course, have to examine the watch a little more carefully. You understand we can't risk buying a paste copy. I understand. It only takes a few minutes. Just sit down here. Put my tools and my piece. There we are. Now, diamonds are all right. Platinum hands all right. Now, quick look at the work. Very interesting. Is is anything the matter? I'm not sure. Pardon me, Mr. Cullen? Uh, yes, I do. Mr. Hope here is our store detective. I'm going to ask him to uh, watch you while I call the police. The police? Yes, I'm going to send them over to the Hopkins den immediately. Well, what about the watch? Why should you... Well, this may merely be some practical joke, Miss Calloway, but I'm afraid we'll have to check. You see, there's a new inscription inside here, signed by Paul Jesson. Paul? Oh, his engravings. It can't be read without this lead. But it says quite clearly, Hopkins Building, Suite 906. Woman locked me in vault. Name, Jackie Mills, alias Jackie Carraway. Sign, Paul Jesse. February 1st, 1952. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. Each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speed, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Joe Gilbert, Edgar Barrier, Herb Butterfield, Britt Wood, and Pat McGeehan. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Meyer Dolinsky, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.